Well, hey, just want to welcome you to our online service and we're in for a real treat tonight as we hear from Tim, who co-leads our youth ministry here at City Point Church. I want you to lean in. You're going to be greatly encouraged as he shares on overcoming fear. Today, I want to talk to you about overcoming your fear. You know, for me, I've always been afraid of heights, but I never really noticed it until I was put in a situation that involved heights. I remember this one time my boss asked me if I wanted to bungee jump off of the Harbour Bridge. And straight away, I wanted to say no because I was scared. I was fearful. But as I thought about it, I said to myself, you know what? It's a work trip. It's all paid for. And I may never get this opportunity again to overcome the fear I have of heights. So I decided that even though I was afraid, I was going to do it anyway. Let's just watch this quick video of me overcoming my fear of heights. Now, to be honest, everyone has fears. Here are two fears that I found online. You know, one that some of you may have, and you'll know who you are when I say it, but one that I just found was funny. The first one is ophidiophobia, which is the fear of snakes. And I know a few people who are probably listening to this message right now that are terrified of snakes. The second one is ablatophobia, which is the fear of bathing. You know, some of your parents are probably staring at your teenage kids right now. Yup, that's you. But like I said, we all have fears. Some of you here who probably own a business are probably worried about what would happen to my business during this lockdown. Maybe it's the fear of getting COVID or even the fear of not being a good enough parent for your kids. But how you approach that fear can either make you or break you. We can either let fear dictate who we become Or we can let God dictate who we become. We can make decisions out of fear or out of faith in God. But I want to give you some good news. I want to be talking to you today about how you can overcome your fears and live your best life. You know, maybe for you that's taking risks, enjoying relationships, or even succeeding in business or your work. And probably just even being yourself. Let's pray. Father, I pray over every person that is watching, you know what they're feeling, things that they're excited about and things that they worry about. Let us be a people that won't let fear stop us. In Psalm 56, verse 3 to 4, it says, But when I am afraid, notice how it says when I am afraid, not if I am afraid. Because in life there are going to be times where fear creeps in, but what are you going to do when that fear comes? And let me tell you, in the next part of this verse, it says, I will put my trust in you. You see, God wants us to put our full trust in him. Even when that fear seems too big or too small, God wants us to trust that he will make all things work together for good to those who love him. Next, it says, I praise God for what he has promised. When we're worried and afraid, stop praising God. Turn on the worship music and start praising him and worshiping him. And as you do that, you'll start to notice a shift in the way that you feel towards that fear that you may have. So instead of letting fear stop you from enjoying the things that God has set out for you, would you take courage and say that even though I'm afraid, I'm going to praise God and declare what he says about me. It goes on to say, I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What can people do to me? You know, why should we be afraid of what people will do to us if we trust in God? The title of my message tonight is Fear Won't Stop Me. Turn to the person beside you and say, Fear Won't Stop Me. But if you're watching alone, 
place your hand on your heart and say, fear won't stop me. Tonight I'm going to give you four things to help you overcome your fear. I want everyone to think of a common fear or worry that you may um, have faced or maybe you're still going through it. You know, it could be the fear of not knowing how your kids will turn out when they grow up. Or maybe even the fear of failure. Or the fear of your family having struggles during the season that we're in. If you've thought of something, that's great. But this is how we can overcome those fears. My first point is to trust God and what He says about you. You know, you may say that you're weak, but God says that you're strong. And Psalm 18.32 says that God arms me with strength and He makes my way perfect. Or you may say that you're abandoned, but God says that you are adopted. In Ephesians 1, 5, it says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. You might also say that you have been rejected, but God says that you are his. In Isaiah 43, 1, it says, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Tell the person next to you that fear won't stop me. You know, my second point is to praise God for what he has promised. I praise God for what he has promised. Do you know praise reduces pressure and worship drives away our worries? You know, that's why David was called upon by King Saul when he was distressed to play his harp as an, as an act of worship. And as he would play his harp, Saul would feel better. You know, when we praise and worship God, we're reminded of how big our God is, and therefore our problems seem insignificant compared to his might and his power. You know, there is so much power in declaring the promises of God over your life, and I never understood it until I started speaking the word of God and his promises over myself. You know, one verse that comes to mind is Joshua 1 verse 9. It says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. In Proverbs 18.21 it says that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Meaning whatever you're speaking over your life, you give it power. You know, so if you're constantly speaking fear into your life, you're giving it the power over your life. But like I said, when I was reading Psalm 56, I praise God for what he has promised. So instead of giving into fear and speaking it over your life, would you start praising God for what he has promised by declaring what he says over your life? Remember this, praise reduces pressure and worship drives away our worries. My third point is, know you are loved. 1 John 4.18, it says, Perfect love casts out all fear. And I remember when I first heard this verse when I was young, I never really understood what it was talking about. And I asked myself, how does love cast out fear? But when I read it properly and prayed over the verse, I started to understand it a lot more better. You see, when we know that we're loved by God, we know that he'll take care of us and therefore we are confident and safe in his love and we become less fearful. God is love and he is also perfect, which makes his love perfect. So the closer we come to God, the less power fear has over us because we feel God's presence. We feel his strength, his comfort, his guidance and his love to overcome those fears. My last point for you tonight is face your fear. Tell the person next to you, fear won't stop me. And again, if you're watching alone, place your hand on your heart and tell yourself that fear won't stop you. You know, in life, there are going to be times where we even go through fears that are easily prevented. But because as people, we tend to put it off a lot um, until the last minute. Like say if you had an exam coming up tomorrow and you were worried that you were going to fail because you never actually took the time to prepare for the exam. You know, but if you studied hard for the exam, you wouldn't worry as much, but you would know and you would be confident enough to know that you're going to pass. So for some fears, we just need to stop procrastinating and start taking personal responsibility in order to stop ourselves from worrying and being fearful. Now, tonight I've been talking about overcoming your fear. 
And it's all good knowing these things, but who knows that now you actually have to have the courage to face your fear. Because you can't just sit around and do nothing and expect it to disappear. You know, courage doesn't mean that you're not afraid, but courage is being afraid and doing it anyway. Courage is not letting fear stop you. So you'll never know what will happen unless you try. You know, don't fear failing. Fear letting opportunities slip by in your life. Life would be too boring if all you did was not try anything because you're afraid of what the outcome will be. You know, fear doesn't have to control your life anymore. If you remember at the start of my message, I played the video of me facing my fear of heights. So I want to challenge you, whatever that fear is, that is holding you back from doing a lot of things in life. Would you choose to be courageous? Even though you're afraid, step out and face that fear. You see, I was afraid to bungee jump off of the Harbour Bridge, but I did it anyway and I faced my fear of heights. So to finish off my message, I want to challenge you. Would you stop letting fear stop you? And start trusting God and what he says about you. Start praising him and, and, and what he has promised. Know that you are loved and face your fear. Well, hey, if you want to know Jesus, you can just simply pray this prayer. Maybe you've been away from God in your heart uh, for a long time, or maybe um, you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. You can make a decision right now, no matter where you're at, no matter what you've done, he loves you. And why don't you just pray this prayer in your heart with me and say this, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. I believe in you. I love you. And I want to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made a decision today, we would like to say congratulations. This is the best decision you will ever make and is the first step in a lifetime journey with God. And here at City Point, we have three steps to help you along the way after you make the decision. Step one, keep coming to church. Number two, join a life group. Life groups are such an important part of our Christian walk as it's a time when we get to connect with other Christians and grow together. So if you haven't already joined a life group, text the number on the screen and would love to help you get connected in a life group either in person or online. Number three, do growth track. This is a three-step process where we get to draw closer to God, learn more about ourselves and hear the heart and the vision of our church. So if you haven't already, we'd really encourage you to sign up by texting the number on the screen. Once again, if you made a decision, we want to say congratulations and we don't want you to walk this journey alone. We'd love to get alongside you, so please click the link in the chat or text the number on the screen so we can come and help you along your journey. Here at City Point, we believe that generosity is in the believer's lifestyle. And if you would like to give today, there are two ways you can do it. Either click the link in the chat or text City Point to 818. And lastly, if this is your first time to City Point, or maybe you've been visiting for a while and want to make City Point your home, we would love to get connected with you. So please click the link in the chat or text the number on the screen and we'll get in contact with you this week. Well, hey, thanks so much for being part of our, our service today. And uh, maybe there's fears that you're carrying and, and worries, stress that you have. I want to encourage you that God is faithful. Lean into his presence and put these principles that Tim shared uh, tonight into practice that you might be able to not let fear stop you. Lord, I just pray over every person here. I just pray that they would be a people that rise up in Jesus name, walk with faith and walk in peace and that they wouldn't let fear stop them. They wouldn't let it rob them of their dreams, the calling, the purpose that you have for them. You would bless them in Jesus' name. Amen.